Hello, my friends. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Today, we're talking about spinal tap or lumbar puncture, and I'm just going to be teaching it as we go through the questions. It's from the Blue Book, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. I have my dogs in here with me today, so if you hear some noises, that may be why. I have my little Israel right here next to me. You can see his tail right here. <laughs> he wants some attention. So um, today we're going to be talking about uh, spinal tap or lumbar puncture. And so this comes from the blue book and it's not going to be nearly as long as some of my other videos. There's not that much about it that you need to know for NCLEX. So we're just going to focus on the key things. The blue book you can get at Amazon. The blue book contains factual information that you need to know, but there are no NCLEX questions in the book. And sorry, the, my dog hit the camera. There are no actual NCLEX questions in the book. So I put the questions here on YouTube to test you on the content that you learned in the blue book. So my recommendation is you get the book from Amazon and then you can test yourself with those here. Uh, when we go through those, you know, um, this channel is a part of the greater clinic review organization, which offers an NCLEX review. Mark Klimek himself, the goat does that it's online on demand, go to clinicreviews.com. Uh, to access, get access to that. We also have a monthly tutoring package that we offer and streaming service. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Which CS CSF finding obtained via lumbar puncture, which is a spinal tap, would be considered abnormal and should be reported to the healthcare provider? So CS CSF is cerebral spinal fluid. So a lumbar puncture is when they go in the lumbar area and pull off CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. And um, the lumbar, if you think cervical, thoracic is mid back, lumbar is low back. I always think L goes with L, lumbar, low back. So I, it's very likely I would be trying to pick the right answer. So I need to make sure I'm reporting the abnormal one to the healthcare provider. Okay, abnormal, I'm looking for the bad thing. Clear colorless appearance, opening pressure of 100 millimeters of water, presence of red blood cells or glucose level of 60 milligrams per deciliter. So I teach my students clear is good, cloudy is bad because everything except blood, everything that comes out of the body except blood is clear right? Drainage, wound drainage, urine, everything's clear. So I like clear colorless. That makes sense to me. I don't know what the opening pressure should be. So I'm going to kind of skip that one. Presence of red blood cells. Would I expect red blood cells to be in the cerebral spinal fluid? That doesn't sound good to me. I, it just doesn't sound like good. Glucose level of 60 milligram per deciliter. So I know in the CSF, the Glucose level is on average about half of that of the, the body uh, of the serum. So glucose level, I'm pretty confident, is normal. So I don't know about the opening pressure, and red blood cells doesn't sound good. So let me rewrite read this. Considered abnormal and should be reported. So again, I don't know what the opening pressure should be, but I'm pretty sure that red blood cells should not be in C CSF. And so instead of picking the answer I'm not sure about, I'm like, maybe I'm going to pick the answer I'm really pretty sure should not be in CSF. So we do not expect there to be red blood cells in the cerebral spinal fluid. A patient undergoing a lumbar puncture asks why the procedure is necessary, which is the best response by the nurse. Okay, let me reread that. A patient undergoing a lumbar puncture, remember the lumbar is low back, asks why the procedure is necessary. What's the best response? Okay. It helps to measure the pressure around your brain and spinal cord. Well, that seems like that would be right. True. It's a routine test for all patients admitted to the hospital. No, I know that's not true. The doctor ordered it to check for muscle disorders. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. It seemed like maybe a neurologic disorder, but not a muscle. It will relieve the pain you're experiencing. So it doesn't say he's having pain. Could it relieve pain? I don't know, but it doesn't say he's having pain. Remember, we only know what they told us. So why would I... Why would I read into this question that he's having pain when I'm pretty sure that a lumbar puncture can be used to measure pressure around your, your brain and spinal cord? So that is 
one of the reasons they do it. The other reason is to relieve pressure around the brain and spinal cord. So they can pull off CSF and relieve pressure. Now that might relieve pain that somebody's feeling, but that's not why we do it. Okay. And it didn't tell us they were having pain. So the best answer here is that it helps to measure the pressure around your brain and spinal cord. Following a lumbar puncture, low back, the nurse instructs the patient to lie flat for several hours. The primary purpose of this instruction is to, and actually they're supposed to lie flat for six to 12 hours after lumbar puncture, Pre prevent spinal cord compression. Well, that doesn't really make sense. That doesn't, doesn't seem like that would be a problem. Reduce the risk of post-procedure headache. So I've certainly heard that a headache is associated with a lot of spinal cord stuff that they do. So that seemed, that makes sense to me. Promote rapid healing of the puncture site. I, I've, I've never heard of bed rest promoting rapid healing of anything. Enhance reabsorption of anesthetic agents. Enhance reabsorption of anesthetic agents. I've never heard of bed rest enhancing reabsorption of anesthetic agents. So I have heard commonly that spinal cord things can cause headaches. So I'm going to pick the answer that I am almost 100% confident is right rather than, than the one I've never heard of, y'all. Don't let the wrong answers distract you and go, well, I've never heard of that, but maybe, okay, no, that's not how you answer NCLEX questions. You go, well, the one that sounds best to me is the one I'm going to pick. I'm not going to be distracted by the wrong answers that don't even make sense. A patient is scheduled for a lumbar puncture to obtain CSF for diagnostic testing. Which laboratory value should the nurse report to the healthcare provider before the procedure? So this isn't about how the CSF looks. It's about labs that you get back before the procedure. Hemoglobin level of 12.5. Well, that's normal. Blood glucose level of 120. That's, you know, if they're not a diabetic, that might be a little high. Uh, I think 110 is the top end of normal, but 120 isn't high enough to, for me to be concerned about it. Serum sodium level of 140, which is normal. Platelet count of 50,000, which is really low. Now, why would I be concerned about a platelet count that's low? That's because they could bleed. Is there a possibility for bleeding after lumbar puncture? Yes. And then the platelet count is low. Could that be worse? Yes. So I got to report that. That's the uh, definitely the abnormal finding that I need to report. The nurse is assisting with a lumbar puncture, low back. In which position should the nurse be placed to optimize access to the lumbar spine? Now, that's why you need to remember lumbar's low back because you think which of these positions is going to make the low back most easily accessible? Prone with a pillow under the abdomen. Okay, prone is laying on your belly with a pillow under the abdomen. Well, I guess that would kind of lift your back up to get to it. Supine. That's on your back with the head elevated 30 degrees. No, absolutely not. B is out. Lateral recumbent with the knees drawn up to the chest. So that's laying on your side with the knees drawn up to the chest. Now, that definitely lets your low back be visible. And the reason I like that better than prone with the pillow under the abdomen is because it's easier to, because you can lift the bed up, it's easier to go straight in, like from the side, right? I'm standing on the side of the person than to stand on top and go down. Like that just makes more sense to me. So I like C better than A. Sitting upright with legs extended and back arched forward. Okay, so I don't like that one because I don't like the sitting up. We already know they have to be on bed rest for six to 12 hours. So even if I thought D allow allowed them to get access to the lumbar spine, I don't like it because they're sitting up. And so the one that I like best is C. And in fact, the correct answer is, is called a lateral, re lateral recumbent that's laying on your side with the knees drawn up to the chest. So you're kind of hunched over your knees laying on your side. That's called lateral recumbent. After a lumbar puncture, a patient reports a severe headache that worsens when sitting up and improves when lying down. What is the most appropriate initial nursing action? Now, remember, they're supposed to be laying down to prevent a headache. So if they have a headache that is worse when they sit up and better when they lay down, that makes sense. That's why they're on bed rest. So I would say 
I don't know. I mean, it seems like I should tell them to stay lying down for a while. Let's see what we have. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. I'm not sure that's what I'd want to do because it seems like this is why they're on bed rest because they sit up. It's not good. Administer prescribed analgesics and encourage fluids. Well, I do know part of the reason they get a headache after lumbar puncture, one of the reasons, not the only, is because when you pull off CSF, they do get a little bit low on CSF fluid and that they do need to replenish that with more fluids. So we do push fluids after CSF or after lumbar puncture. So administer prescribed analgesics. Maybe they have Tylenol ordered and encourage fluids. That makes sense to me. It's a headache. It's sort of an expected headache, but we can still give them something for that and encourage fluids. I like B and place the patient in Trendelenburg position. So Trendelenburg is head down and feet up. Well, they have to lay flat, but there's no reason to think their head has to be down. I don't know. That doesn't seem like if I had a headache, I wouldn't really want someone to put me with my head down. Restrict fluid intake. I know that's wrong because we need to push fluids after a lumbar puncture. So the so really it would be between A and B. And because I know that bed rest is required for six to 12 hours after a lumbar puncture, I'm okay with not notifying the healthcare provider because I know that sitting up can give you a headache, right? So I'm good with B. That's the best action or most appropriate, most appropriate, best. Uh, those kind of mean the same thing. A nurse is preparing a patient for a lumbar puncture, which pre-procedure instruction is most important. You will need to fast for eight hours before the procedure, empty your bladder before the procedure begins. You must lie flat for six hours before the procedure, practice holding your breath during the procedure. So we are not going to practice holding your breath. If they, no, that's absolutely ridiculous. No, D is out. Now they don't have to lie flat before they have to lie flat after, but not before. So C is out. So for me, it's between A and B because most procedures, I tell people to go to the bathroom before they go to the procedure. And most procedures, I have them fast for eight hours, right? So these are like, it could be either one. So this is the reason I put this question here is I wanted you to know that NPO before is not required for a lumbar puncture. Okay. This is one of the few diagnostic tests, invasive diagnostic tests, most invasive diagnostic tests. You have to be NPO. I mean, you don't have to be NPO for CT scan or chest X-ray or anything like that, but most invasive diagnostic tests they want you NPO for. This is one of the few that you do not have to be. So I would remember that, that you don't have to be NPO for a lumbar puncture. And the reason we tell them to empty their bladder is because we tell everybody that, right? So I'm going general. In general, I tell everybody that. So that's what I'm going to do. A physician orders a lumbar puncture for a patient suspected of having bacterial meningitis. Which of the following findings in the cerebral spinal fluid would support this diagnosis? Clear CSF with normal glucose levels. Cloudy CSF with elevated protein and decreased glucose. Bloody CSF with increased red blood cells, clear CSF with elevated white blood cell count and normal glucose. <clears throat> All right, bacterial. Clear CSF. So I'm going to rule out A because that sounds like normal, a normal finding. And I don't know why bacterial meningitis would have blood in it. Um, that just doesn't, out of these, these four, um, A and C seem the least likely. So we have cloudy CSF. And remember, I, I tell my, my students all the time, clear is good, cloudy is bad. Why is cloudy bad? Because it usually indicates some kind of an infection. Clear is good, cloudy is bad. So I go, well, cloudy CSF to me says it's probably an infection. Elevated protein, maybe. I don't know why I would have elevated protein and decreased glucose levels. So it does make sense that I have decreased glucose levels because these bacteria, bacteria always grow more in a, in a glu high glucose um, environment because that helps them grow, right? That gives them energy. So B seems okay to me. D is clear CSF with elevated white blood cell count and normal glucose. So D, if I were purely guessing, purely guessing, I would have a hard time guessing between these two. Okay. Clear CSF isn't, I don't like it as well because I would expect it to be cloudy, elevated white blood cell count. I do expect that normal glucose. I don't know. So what I want you to know is that B is bacterial and D is viral. So remember, clear is good, cloudy is bad. And the protein is elevated because there's actually protein in the bacteria. And so the, uh, it ends up being an elevated protein. And we have decreased glucose levels because the bacteria is ingesting that glucose 
for the purpose of growing and, and maintaining life. And then D, because viral is a different type of uh, different type of infection, that actually has clear CSF, um, and and they don't ingest all that glucose. I don't know why. I don't know much. I don't know that much about viral versus bacterial, but I knew that. Do know that the viruses aren't eating all that glucose like the bacteria do. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. That's really all, primarily all you need to know about lumbar puncture. I would remember lumbar is low back because you could get a question, any random question that uses the word lumbar. And a lot of times the word lumbar is a key word. It'll, it'll kind of give you an idea of like, what are we looking at here? So remember lumbar is low back, thoracic's mid back and cervical is, is upper neck region. And those are key words in any question that you get that uses those words. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the clinic review family. We love you and have a great rest of your day.